Well, shit. Well, this is thanks to Tony, very nice guy, who messaged me earlier last week, well, late last week, saying, hey, Matt, I want to have four movie reviews from you. Here's some money to your PayPal. I'm like, what are the four movies? Send me the list. And when he said Solo, I thought he meant the one with Mario Van Peebles. I'm like, okay. And he's like, no, I mean Solo, a Star Wars story. I went, shit. Uh, I, should I give the money back? But no, I, I took the money. I sound like Ford Fairlane, Andrew Dice Clay. Do you believe I took the money? And now I had to see movies like this. But hey, <clears throat> Solo, a Star Wars movie. I'll see any movie if the price is right. I'll see any. I'll do any review for any movie if the price is right. Because I'm a whore and I love it. People think whore is a bad thing. I'd love to be a whore. I would love it. Money, money. Just like the studios are whores. You don't think they're whores? They're whoring Star Wars out. The fact you didn't fucking. Han Solo prequel, you don't think that's whoring out? If they can whore out, I want to whore out. Because I want the fucking money, I want the power, I want the pussy. Well, you don't get pussy from this, just like this fucking film don't get pussy. It is a fucking pussy. It is ready to fuck. Fuck this fucking movie. Once again, we have a prequel that's pointless, that's useless. That's unneeded. That is unwanted. Did anyone really give a fuck about how Han Solo started? Just think about it. When you do this kind of movie, <clears throat> are we going to learn anything we didn't know before? Are the revelations, any revelations that does happen, going to be cool? Are the first the first time he beats someone, the first time he gets this, will it be put to a great sense of reverence? But no, in all cases. We get to see the dice, but not the dice man, not Andrew Dice Clay, the dice from the last shithead, the last just, just unbelievable, the last Jedi with that fucking dice that every person said. Oh, they put the dice in there because it's going to be in the new Han Solo movie. And it is. It's a decent-sized part of the movie because when Han Solo's with this girl and they love each other, he gives her the dice. And at the end, he gets the dice back and puts it on his fucking dashboard. What's that? If they release Star Wars on Blu-ray again, they'll fucking digitally put CG dice in the old Star Wars movies. Would not be surprised. And the lead guy, there were stories that this guy sucked and they needed people to help him act. And you buy it because the guy's dull. And the thing was Han Solo, that's another reason why this prequel was pointless. You cannot, there's some roles you can't capture. You cannot capture Harrison Ford. That's why there should not be another guy who plays Indiana Jones. Make your own fucking movie up. Do your own shit. <clears throat> and as someone said with all these prequels, what, it's going to be a fucking, I think, uh, a, one guy said, it's going to be a C-3PO fucking prequel? Just technically, the Phantom Menace would that be that. But you don't need a, well, they want to do Boba Fett. They want to do Yoda. What's next? The fucking elephant flute plane fucker and the cantina or the, the one of those fucking creatures of Return of the Jedi playing the fucking band? We gonna get Jabba the Hutt movie? Is that what we're gonna get? With his brother Pizza the Hutt? What the fuck else are they gonna do with these movies? And yet the effects are fine because they got the budget. It's pretty effects. <clears throat> but for what? 
I mean, you look at the story, the story is much of nothing. Han Solo, but you get this text about people wanting hyper fuel, like people wanting fuel. Is this the World Warrior? Stupid fucking dice from Last Jedi is one of the first fucking things we see. Fuck you, movie. Yeah, remind me of the Last Jedi. There's a car chase on the. I don't even want to talk about this fucking movie. There's a car chase. At one point, they talk about this lady creature from this water that sounds like an old granny as she see she sounds like she's fucking wanting Tweety Bird to be safe from Sylvester the fucking cat that's what this fucking lady creature sounds like and it's trying to have jokes in it like I have a thermite detonator no that's a rock <laughs> you made a clicking sound then they run out that's when you get the car chase and I unsolves with this girl the girl gets caught. Han Solo gets away. Oh, you know how he got the name Solo? I thought literally that was his fucking last name. Solo. I, I literally thought that was his last name. I mean, this is a world where Skywalker is a last name. So I figure Solo, yeah, it's just his last name. No, it's not his last name. You want to know how we know it's not his last name? Because then he doesn't know what to do. He wants to be a pilot. So he goes into recruitment for people, You, the Empire. What's your last name? I don't have a last name. I'm just the only one. And the guy's like, the only one, huh? The only one. Only one. Solo. Your name's Han Solo. I'm like... <laughs> That's how he gets the hounds. That's how he gets the solo name. Just some random fucking guys like. Only one? Your name's Solo. Some random fucking guy gave him the name Solo. <laughs> and so, then he's in the middle of a battle, because he's worth the Empire. He meets Woody Harrelson, who can rotate his guns with his hands like he's in the Wild West. He wants to hang with Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson tells him to fuck off. When they release another, he's arrested for deserting, which he wasn't doing. He's put into a pit with this creature that hasn't eaten for days. And it's Chewbacca. And I'm like, so Chewbacca ate people? Granted, because he wasn't fed for days. But I, I just never thought of Chewbacca being the type that ate people. And this is like the first time we meet him is that he's eating people. Because he hasn't been fed for days. <coughs> and then the first thing they meet, they have a fight. And conveniently, he knows how to talk a little bit of Wookiee. You would think maybe, oh, it's something he had to learn. He's been with the guy for years, so he picked up on the guy's language. No, he just... For some reason, he knew how to talk Wookiee. That'd be like me, out of the blue, knowing how to talk Chinese. I don't. I mean, that's just fucking convenient writing. So then they figure a way to get out of the pit. They get out of there. Woody Harrelson's crew picks them up. The crew also has this lady and this guy who's like a monkey with four or so arms. And they're around a campfire. And you know how he, you know the great famous blaster. 
of Han Solo. How does he get the blaster? Here's a blaster, kid. They're like, here's a blaster. Oh, okay. No reverence, no, it's just, hey, here's a blaster. Wow, thank God. I mean, without this movie, you can think of any number of ways he got that blaster. Any number of ways that all this that him and Chewie met. Now you're told how they did this for that in such a fucking nonchalant manner. <laughs> so the four of them have this heist. And the snow on this train. Two of those people die. The the lady and the the thing with Monty with four arms, which sounds like a kung fu movie, but <clears throat> they die. Uh, they get this cargo, but then they have to let the cargo go because they're being attacked by these marauders. So really the heist was fucking pointless. Cause they don't get the stuff anyway. Cause then you gotta go to a bar and there's Paul Bettany. Oh, and there's the girl from the beginning. And it's like, you need to get the shit that you lost. So wow, those two people, those two terrors were literally introduced. The two people in Woody Harrelson's crew. To do a heist and die. And the heist meant nothing. Cause nothing came above, came from it. You, you introduced us to two characters long enough for them to die and then their deaths didn't mean anything. <laughs> oh fucking K. Oh fucking K. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My fucking nose is even making farting sounds. Because he knows this movie fucking stinks. So they need <coughs> they need a ship. So they go to Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian, playing cards. There's some nice creatures designs there. I don't know. Maybe the movie needed more scenes like this with just them playing cards. But Han Solo fucking loses. Then you have one of the worst parts of this movie. Lando's first mate, who's this female droid, who is a bitch. And yeah, you're throwing all this SJW stuff in there, which there's a reason to. <coughs> she was just an annoying bitch. Just every two minutes, it would be something like, Why? Because you're my organic overlord? You need anything? How about equal rights? Shut the fuck up. God damn it, man. Star Wars was never about this bullshit. Go to Star Trek if you want to do that shit. Or do it better. Not so fucking on the nose that cocaine can't even get through it. Shut the fine fuck up. You fucking metallic bitch. Suck a fucking metallic dick. Gold plated and all. Jesus Christ on a cracker. Right in their face. And the whole pansexual thing came about with Lando. Just so that we get the idea that Lando fucks the robot. Because the robot mentions how Lando's into her, and the actual girl asks, How would it work? And the robot goes, It works. And then they fuck. So Lando and his fucking sex robot trying to fly it, and then they make this plan to go down. It's a place that has slaves, and they work into there. The female sex robot has this fucking 
Sally Field moment, Norma Ray of the fucking droids to make an uprising for the union or whatever the fuck you want, whatever the fuck they're going with this. Get the droids to go yeah, over their organic overlords and go crazy. Well, Han Solo gets in the vault to get these things they need. And Chewie sees another Wookiee and saves it. And then this battle happens. The droid, the fucking, the fuck robot gets shot. And Lando gets hurt. They get to the Falcon. Now Han's going to fly the Falcon. And guess what? We get to see the Tesla run. And I must admit, I must admit, seeing the Millennium Falcon and some cool lighting through this almost like a tunnel. You know, the Imperial ship is closing in on uh, closing in on them and the TIE fighters are chasing them and the Millennium Falcon is flying through and the TIE the TIE fighters are shooting at them and you got the music and some of the music is from Empire Strikes Back do 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 like <coughs> I think the scene where they're going through the mine not the minefield the asteroid field and Empire some of that music is in this scene. I will admit I got some smiles out of that But I'm like I know why you're flipping the nostalgia trip in my brain Yeah, the music from Empire kind of like when it was going through the and there's Woody Harrelson He's at the guns like Luke and Han were in A New Hope the same guns shooting at TIE fighters when I could just like, wait a minute, I could just go watch the old fucking movies and do it. I could watch those movies back to bed. You did the same thing. But, you know, as a scene by itself, it was kind of, it, I, it's the best scene in the movie. I'll say that. That's to me easily the best scene in the movie. And there's some mindless fun in that scene. You know, the visuals, the color scheme. The music from Empire Strikes Back. They also deal with this big creature that's trying to grab them. They lead it to be sucked into this void. It was a fun scene. But again, I get why it was fun because it was flipping switches in my nostalgia train of a brain. <coughs> they land, they taught these marauders. And now the Marauders, they're not bad guys. These are the same people that were fighting with them on the train earlier in the film in the snow that got two of their people killed. But no, they're not bad guys. They're allies. The fight against the evil Paul Bettany and his group. <laughs> so the movie's trying to get us to go from you kill two people at the beginning of the film that I'm guessing movie you were trying to make us like for the limited amount of screen time they were on. Now we're supposed to think these marauders are good guys. I didn't give a fuck about them. Didn't give a fuck about your war or your president. Han Solo goes to Paul Bettany along with the girl. Woody Harrelson betrays them. But Han Solo knew Woody would betray him, so he left the real stuff. <coughs> he let the Marauders attack Paul Bettany's group. And what they thought was not real, the real stuff really is the real stuff the real equipment I think the the hyper fuel shit like that so Woody Harrelson leaves with Chewbacca and then Han the girl Paul Bettany they get in a fight the girl stabs Paul Bettany <coughs> and 
she lets Han Solo leave, but then I guess she's also kind of a villain too. Because she has a hologram talk with Darth Maul. I don't know how the fuck Darth Maul is alive. <laughs> Apparently, you have to watch some fucking Clone Wars TV show or some comic book or some other cartoon to know that. Sorry, I didn't catch it. So I don't know how the fuck he's alive. I don't know what the fuck's the point of having Darth Maul in there. What's the point? And there's even a moment that he starts his fucking lightsaber for no goddamn reason. He's going to intimidate her through the fucking hologram? See this? <coughs> but if Darth Maul can survive the Phantom Menace, then how the fuck did he ever die? And however the fuck he died so that he's not in A New Hope. If he could survive fucking being cut in half and through an endless pit at the end of Phantom Menace, how the... <coughs> Darth Vader couldn't fucking do that. But somehow Darth Maul did that. <laughs> what the fuck? And then they do a whole take on Han shooting first. Where Han's against Woody. And Woody Harrelson says there's another rule I, you need to know. And Han Solo shoots first. And I think even Woody Harrelson says something about shooting. You know, glad you shot first because I would have shot you. So... They had to literally do a take on Han shooting first. They get the stuff, Han Solo and Chewie to the Marauders. The girl leaves. He's got that fucking dice. And he goes to Lando. Wins the card game. Wins the Falcon. And him and Chewie fly off. And then directed by Ron Howard. I'm like, really? Now people are like, well, you just told the plot. I do that. The reason I do that in my reviews, folks, is to literally replay the movie in my mind. Especially if it's a movie I hate or dislike. Because more than likely, I'll fucking forget about it. Or if it's a movie I like, sort of replay the stuff I enjoy and have fun with it. I'm playing a movie like a projector in my mind. Well, here's like a projector with blood coming down it, like Evil Dead. <coughs> the visuals are not the problem. The music, the only music I remember is the shit from the old movies. I'm like, let me ask you something. Rogue One, <coughs> I can't play it for you already. Last Jedi, what the fuck was the, <coughs> The Force Awakens, <laughs> those three movies in this, can you remember one new piece of music from a Star Wars movie that's not from the older films, Force Awakens, you know, Last Jedi, Rogue One, can you remember one piece of new music? Think about back in the day, you remember music from A New Hope. When Empire Strikes Back came out, you remember. We turned the Jedi. <coughs> you remember that music? When Luke and Vader are fighting with a choir in the background. What fucking music do you remember in this that wasn't in the old movies? <clears throat> what is it about this guy that got him the job to be the young Han Solo? Granted, it's a tough job to have, because no one's going to be able to replicate Harrison Ford. <clears throat> <clears throat> but why this guy? Because he didn't cut it. I thought he was dull. I thought he was awkward. I thought... Even someone like Chris Pratt <clears throat> has a bit more of the charisma compared to this guy. So, someone like Nathan Fillion. <coughs> God, sorry, this movie is literally making me sick. Now, great, Nathan Fillion, Chris Pratt, they would not have been able to play the role. Look-wise, 
age-wise. I'm just saying those are actors that have a charisma to them that you would need for a Han Solo character to be played as. This guy doesn't have it. He's not charismatic. He, he just seemed off and dull and he didn't cut it. He did not cut it at all. And he's definitely one of the weaker parts of the movie. I know people like Donald Glover's Lando. He's eh. <coughs> eh. Again, you can't compete with Billy D. Williams. And Donald Glover's like, I don't know if he was trying to do an impression, but he's not trying to do an impression. It is, I'm iffy on him. Didn't love it, didn't hate it. Woody Harrelson, I enjoy. I liked him as an actor. Can't save the movie. Paul Bettany, one dimensional villain, nothing to him. <coughs> Even the girl, nothing to her. Really, nothing to her character. The action sequences. Really, the big four you did is, well, I, let's say five. The car chase, which, eh, in, no different than any other car chase that you've seen in shitload of movies. The heist on the train in the snow. Go chunk of it you saw in the trailers. The Millennium Falcon, the Kessel Run. I had fun with it, I'll admit. <coughs> the gunfight battle when the droids and everything uprise as they're trying to steal a shit from the vault. Eh. Can't remember much. Of it. It's quickly leaving my brain. The ending where they had the little fight with Paul Bettany. Eh. I mean, really the one action scene I would give is the Kelsey run, but that's it. Even then, like I said, let's just play off nostalgia. The characters, sure, it was cool to see Chewbacca in there and doing stuff. Yeah, it's cool. But that's not enough to say the movie needed to exist. The android was fucking lame. She was a bitch. And then on top of it, I guess she's part of the Millennium Falcon. Because they took her brain out and they put her brain in the Falcon. <coughs> Which was never in any of the old movies. And I'm like, where the fuck did this come from? This whole, the Millennium Falcon has a brain from a, uh, this fucking joyous fucking feminist robot, whatever the hell she is. Equal, you know, normal ray of robots, whatever the fuck she is. <clears throat> whatever the fuck she's trying to be. She's the brain of the felt Millennium Falcon. What the fuck? the fuck was that even there for? What was the point? I'm asking, what's the point? It, you watch this film and it's, it doesn't piss me off as much as The Force Awakens. It doesn't piss me off as much as Last Jedi. There's enough fucking over Luke and Leia. Or not really even fucking over Han Solo. He was fucked up more than those two films. <coughs> they really were. Like how this Luke and Leia are nothing to do with this movie. So that alone makes this better than Force Awakens and Last Jedi. And with Rogue One, I would say this is less boring than Rogue One. I, I thought Rogue One was more boring of a movie. This does seem like more stuff happens. Like the pacing wasn't too terrible. I would, yeah, I'd just say this has a better pacing than Rogue One. Rim Job One. Although, both leads suck. Like, the lady in that sucked, and the guy here sucked. 
So, at least this doesn't end with everyone fucking dying like in Rogue One because of sacrifice and look how serious we are as a Star Wars movie. We're serious because we killed everybody. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Because the character sucked. I feel like all you think of what I think of this fucking movie is the fucking song. Not in the movie, but someone did this thing where uh, this fucking video game had writing solo, but then they mixed it with this. You know, uh, people already know the fucking thing where I'm talking about the video game where you had this fucking Han Solo dancing. I shit you not. Which should have told you right away that when Disney got into Star Wars, it was going to fuck it up. I forgot the guy, they took his song and used it for that, and then they changed the words. I think the song was like Riding Solo or something. But then they changed it to, I'm Han Solo, Solo, and I'm like, like this movie... You kiss my fucking ass, suck my fucking dick. It's a fuck as fuck, you piece of fucking shit. Fuck solo, I fuck solo, I fuck solo, solo. It can go eat a shit, it can go fucking suck some dicks. It's a fucking crock of shit, these people get me mighty pissed. Fuck solo, I fuck solo, solo. I just. Someone make a song to say how much this movie fucking sucks. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Goddamn normal Ray wannabe sex robot, fucking dice, shitty lead, playing on your nostalgia train in your brain. Pointless endeavor. No one need to give a fuck about how Han Solo and all the shit you find out was nothing interesting, was nothing new, was nothing with reverence, like, oh, wow, that's cool, that's how that happened, it's just nonchalant, here's a blaster, kid. Oh, you're alone, so your name's Solo. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Was this written in a weekend? <laughs> Might have been rewritten in a weekend, considering all the production problems. I know at first it was going to be more comedy with these guys who did like 21 Jump Street, then they fire them. Which only like, why the fuck did you hire them in the first place? You dumbasses. Then they get Ron Howard, and they reshot like a shitload, and they spent a shitload of money. And doesn't matter how good or bad the movie did, because they're going to make 15 other fucking Star Wars movies for every goddamn year for the next 10 years. They drive it to the fucking ground. It's already in the fucking ground. I got nothing. I really have nothing. See you later. Fuck this bad new movie, man.